Boys. Everyone. Time for new segment, man. New segment, all right? This is going to be something I'm going to do every Thursday. Every Thursday, all right? So I'll mark it down if you want to if you want to see this later. This will be uploaded to YouTube as well. So you're going to be watching there. Hello, hello. So this new segment I have come up with, and it's just something that's kind of close to my heart. And um, I just want to, like, share it with you guys. Um, new segment I've got cooked up. I'm gonna we're we're gonna call it right now. It can change later on, but right now it's gonna be called games with impact. Like, okay, let me let me explain myself. Games with impact, right? This this is gonna be a series of games, or a, this is gonna be a series about games that have impacted my life as a person. Because I do, I still firmly believe games are a form of artwork, and it is the most unique form of artwork, I feel like, because you can get stuff that you can't get from movies, from series, from pictures. You actually get to play through and experience someone's art in the games, right? So, I think a good starter is a game that is very close to my uh, personal art. The game's been dissected a bajillion times, so if you're looking for, like, something that's been dissected, or, like, just dissected and everything, that's not gonna be this, but I will leave a link on YouTube to one I actually like. Well, I like all of them I've seen, I've just a personal one that I like, so if that's gonna be more your speed, I'll have it there, but today we are going to start number one with... Go ahead and cue the music up. Our first games with impact is Silent Hill 2. Back, sorry, no worries, no worries. Yeah, so we are going to start with Silent Hill 2. Now, there's all, like I said, there's, there's probably a million different videos about Silent Hill 2. Are we excited for Silent Hill 2 Remake? Especially excited, and I wanted to go ahead and get this one out with Silent Hill 2 before the remake comes out, wherever it comes. So, this is just gonna be like a, you know, this this game has impacted my life. And, I'll just get, I'll take you on a little story, my first experience with this game. I was young Pharaoh, a very, very young Pharaoh. I mean, a, a, a wee lad, man, I was a wee lad. At my cousin's house, right? I was at my cousin's house, and um, my uncle, he, he he played a lot of horror games, man, on the PS2, everything. My first experience with this game was watching my uncle play this game. It scared the living shit out of me. I'm not gonna lie to you, it, it spooked the crap out of me, brother. It spooked the crap out of me. Um, let's put a, let's put some, uh, some of this on screen, you know, so we don't have, wow, it's right there. Alright. We'll just do this right now. We'll just leave it on as back backdrop, right? So, moving on. Young Pharaoh, scared as shit of this spooky game called Silent Hill 2. Um, later on, I'd try to play it. Uh, again, I was still young. Still got scared. I couldn't take playing this game that much. But, later on in life... I came and played this game, played it through the, for the very first time, played it all the way through, and let me tell you, this game has so much raw emotion in it, I need to replay it myself, yeah. It, it's amazing. So there will be some spoilers here. So, if you don't want it spoiled, maybe come back to this later, or if you're fine with it, it's a 20-year-old game, man. It's a 20-year-old game. There has been time to play this, okay? So, just I'm just getting that out there. That there's your spoiler warning. This game has taught me utmost, honestly. This might sound strange in a horror game. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. This game has taught me empathy for other people, and let me explain how how I think about that. So, you're James. You're going around. You know, the apartments are, they're, they're just rotting and everything. But you meet, like, Angela. And the biggest 
part of it angela and eddie and laura eddie and angela have been going through their own silent hills their own other worlds because it's called other world right and how i've learned empathy is, is like the moment you know when angela is on the stairwell and he's talking to james and everything's on fire and james is like aren't you scared don't do that blah 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 she's like it's always like this for here so that to me has spoken to me and even eddie he's always eating he's never satisfied it has always spoken to me no matter what is going on in your life and it just seems like you're in a, this dark hole and there are other people in dark holes theirs are different people have different experiences things are different so you know you kind of need to look out for that because james he thought everyone could just see his no angela's is on fire so that is huge. It is showing that a lot of people have different problems than you, and you gotta kind of understand that. And that's that's one of the things I wanted to say. Um, another thing is the game's just raw emotion, right? Even the music. The music you can feel. This is, in my opinion, the best video game OST of all time. Like Silent Hills 2 music is all good. And Akira is amazing, amazing composer. It, oh my god, the music just... It somehow has this somber, melancholy tone, but it's beautiful on a lot of the tracks. And then the other tracks that are more heavy, industrial sounding with like the metal noises, they all sound great. They all sound great. I, this, this was, I think, the first game that made me appreciate video game music. Like, looking into video game music, this one stands out to me as the one that made me appreciate it the most. And I think that's a beautiful thing, because like I said, this video games as a, as a medium is an artwork that you can experience yourself. So like I said, I've learned a lot of like maybe empathy from my playthrough. But someone that plays through the first time of Silent Hill 2, they may think of something completely different. They can take it other ways. This is such an open-ended game. It's crazy. And also, I think another thing is, it has a big theme to me personally. You have to take accountability for stuff that, that eats you alive or it's going to consume you. Let me explain. So, you, we all know James Sunderland going through Silent Hill 2. It's all his own other world. Pyramid Head is his guilt, his, his need to be judged. This, this, his, we all, I already said a spoiler warning, so, it is from his sin of killing his wife. And it's eating him alive, even to making this, this giant thing where he thinks that Mary sent him a letter and everything. And if it, if you don't confront what you did, it can just destroy you. And I think that even speaks to the endings you can get in the game, right? The endings of the games... We'll go ahead and open one up on YouTube. We'll just go ahead and have some of the endings playing real quick. So that way y'all kind of get a basis of what I'm saying. Um, SH2 endings. And, um, but I, I just need the endings. I don't really care about all that. Okay, so like the dog. En okay, just to get it out the way, the dog ending is just the meme. But it's the best meme ever, dude. The dog ending is amazing, okay? The dog ending is amazing. All right, see, the dog. I love the dog. <laughs> it was the dog all along. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna move on from the dog ending, okay? We're not even. We're not even gonna like speak about the dog ending, okay? Okay. Which one is this one? Oh, this is the alien one. Another meme ending. The rebirth ending. Okay, which one was this one? Blah, blah, blah. This is the one where James goes off by himself, I believe. Because the drowned ending is the one that he actually, like, dies or in water. But you get the drift. So, like, one, he goes with Maria... One, he goes and just by himself. So I think what it's speaking mostly is the one where he goes like by himself, he's kind of just trying to move forward, right? He's He's gone through all this. He's faced what he's done. And he's trying to move forward. He's trying to learn, right? Whereas the drowned ending, or in the water ending, he has succumbed to what he's done. He believes he can't live 
longer any it's just it it has at this point consumed him so he couldn't go anymore and the maria ending is very interesting because you can take it one of two ways you can take it that james has learned from his past and is moving forward with maria and i think he also leaves with laura or you can take it another way you can take it as james has learned nothing and he's just going to repeat the cycle with Maria. I mean, think uh, I, 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 and that's just a take I have. Like, someone else could completely have a different experience with these endings. And you're going to get different endings your first playthrough because not everyone's going to play the same. Right? I think that's one of the most beautiful things about this game. Your first playthrough will likely never be the same as someone else's. Because this game is more about the experience and actually playing it. The gameplay, tank controls, you can say what you want. Tank controls are fine. It's just that the gameplay is just still wonky. Like, right? Tank controls in Resi are pretty polished for tank control standards. Whereas in Silent Hill 2, it's it's still kind of wonky. You know what I mean? But that's besides the point. I'm just saying this game is not more so about just straight killing everything everything you gotta kind of pay attention and one of the biggest things about this game is the atmosphere of the game the atmosphere of the game is probably bar none one of the best i have ever played hold on sorry my dog was barking i didn't want y'all to hear all that business but the atmosphere in this game is incredible this game does not rely on jump scares it relies on its atmosphere. What are they barking at? I have no clue. It relies on its atmosphere. Example, we're going to talk about the apartment levels real quick. The apartment levels, if you're walking through the apartments, you can hear things. But there are a lot of doors you can't open. And I have always had this firm belief that yes, you can fear something you see. You can fear something you see. You've seen it, it's scary, you can you can be scared of it. But what is absolutely terrifying is hearing something, but you can't. Why is that? The brain is your most, it, it's, it's your best tool and it's also the scariest tool because your brain will start going through all these scenarios and trying to piece together what this thing could look like and a lot of people like myself will go to the worst possible scenario and thinking of like the most scariest thing possible when you hear like this shriek or this groan inside of this decrepit rotting apartment that you know there are creatures around it it is and like they do it perfect it's not boom in your face you have to actually hear it you have to actually wander around you know actually experience it you know and i think i think that this game does atmosphere one of the best if not the best i've ever played if what do you want i'm in, i'm in a segment bub and um those are just some of the experiences i've had with the game um i really want to hear other people's experiences with this game whether if it's changed their life whether it's changed y'all's i i i want to hear all that I'm gonna go ahead and move on to another point. Another thing is this game is a very strange one. You're, like I said, the first game, the first playthrough, it might creep you out for sure, for sure. I mean, it's a creepy game, but mu the multiple playthroughs you play through, maybe like a year after, a couple years after. Myself, I have found this to be a comfortable game now. It's a very relaxing game. I find the setting eerie because it's something that you could see in a dream. You know what I mean? It's some... I've had dreams maybe... I, I can't really remember them. They're all foggy. But I've had dreams that are similar, like, feeling to how the other world works. Or I've seen just these creatures before. It... it it's it's a surreal feeling when you play this game more than once because you're you know this isn't supposed to be a comfy game 
but it is. It's weird. And you can't really do that with the other ones. Maybe Silent Hill 3, but... Or... No, 4, you're actually going to have to do some gaming to be. Number 1... I mean, number 1's great. It's an amazing game, but I just don't get that same feeling from 1 that I do as 2, as coming back to it. Whereas I'm playing 1, I feel more like a Silent Hill, like a horror survival game. I know the, uh, the story's continued in Part 3. Whereas like Silent Hill 2 is just like the one-off, and it's just supposed to be an experience. And when you come back to it... It's a be it's an it's another beautiful experience. I I really respect it about this game. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm giving it all this praise. It's not my favorite Silent Hill game. I know it's the best one, but it's not my favorite. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw the hot takeout right now. Silent Hill 4 is my favorite, and we're not gonna get into why because I will be here all fucking day. Just just getting that out the way. So that way you don't think, oh he's just He's just sucking Silent Hill 2 off because he's the fanboy. Uh, 4 is my favorite. I think 2 is the best, but 3 is very close. 3 is very close. And I think just... Uh, I, I know I'm kind of rapid-firing through this, but I don't want this to be like an Omega like one-hour video because if you want a one-hour video of, you know... Silent Hill 2 being dissected every part of the story. You, you can go find that. It's been done a million times. I will leave, like I said, I will leave a link for the one I personally like the most. But we're going to go ahead and move on to like my closing statements and everything. This is going to like I said, it's going to be a very brief brief segment. Um this game has impacted me a lot. It it has impacted the way I've looked at video games. As an art form, as a medium, as a lot of things. Like... I don't think I would be able to appreciate games as much as I do had I not played this game. And maybe I'm giving this game too much credit, but... I feel like a lot of us hold just if this, like you have these few games you hold close to your heart. Right? Silent Hill 2 is one of the ones that I called close to my heart. Because it changed an outlook on a lot of things for me. It made me want to understand people on, a, on another level. As even a way that shaped your personality in all honesty. Honestly, yes. It, it, is, it has shaped a piece of my personality. I think the biggest part is, is trying to understand where people are coming from. Because like I said, that first time playing through, I'm just thinking they're all all seeing the same stuff you know what i mean but no angela's like no it's always fire here and that that's really spoke to me like oh you might have similar problems to me but it's not the same i need to i need to understand more what's going on that's how some games have impacted me too yeah and like i said everyone holds certain games close to the heart silent hill 2 is one that holds close to my heart the series is one i hold close to my heart and it pains me because <laughs> Silent Hill 2 right now is a series is kind of a meme. We'll have to see when Remake comes out, see what they've done. I, I have faith in the team. But, like I said, this, this game is, is something special. So if you have never played this game and you actually watched the video, the game is not entirely spoiled for you. Go play the game. The game is is an incredible experience i think everyone that plays video games should play silent hill 2 through once it's an experience like no other oh let me just get the big pyramid out of the out of the room real quick even as a kid i thought pyramid head was badass pyramid head is badass but my take is he should not exist outside silent hill or not Silent Hill, outside of James's head, the only one that should be outside of James's head is the white pyramid head that the creator of Pyramid Head specifically made, so that way it makes sense for Pyramid Head to exist outside of James's mind. This is all I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop right there. I could talk about this crap all day long. We're not gonna get into homecoming, we're not gonna get into downpour, we're not gonna get into any of that. Maybe if y'all want my my takes and stuff on the other Silent Hill games, sure. We can, we can have that conversation later. This is just specifically Silent Hill 2. 
And I don't think much needs to be said about Pyramid Head. Like I said, if you want the monster or the, the guy dissected, it's there is probably about 40 videos of that. What about DBD Pyramid Head? Like I said, he should not have existed. Well, now he can because James is in the game. So it makes sense. I think White Pyramid Head should be in DBD. Come on, man. Make it a skin. But closing statement besides going to play the game, I will also recommend if you're just someone that doesn't like playing the games and you just like watching someone play the game watch if you're going to watch someone play this game watch it with no commentary if it's going to be your first experience watch it with no commentary and just watch what happens and then you can go watch whoever play it because this game i really feel like you are a immensely immersed when you're going through this game the immersion is absolutely crazy, and the sound is crazy. The music is amazing. The voice acting is is very awkward and bad. It was an early PS2 title, but this game specifically, it works. I feel like these would be how these character or these characters interact. I mean, they're all they're all just shell shocked. They don't know what's going on. So I I give a pass on the voice acting. So all in all, make sure you experience this game. However medium you want to experience it, experience it. I recommend playing it. Um, I'd recommend the PS2 version. It's going to be your best bet, but I understand it is not economical to play this game on the PS2. For one, the game is expensive. I'm sure you get a PS2 lying around, but the, the fucking game is expensive. Like, we can, we can just check. Let's price check Silent Hill 2 real quick. Just even the uh, regular one. Silent Hill 2... PS2. Yeah. Yeah. That is a PAL version. That is EU. $134. $164. Let me just go ahead and tell you this. I bought mine like four or five years ago. Like bought another one. My friend sold it to me for like $80. It, it doubled. But fear not, if you have the means of a PC, there is a PC port, um, Silent Hill 2, that is actually remastered, that uh, the community has done itself. It's as close as the PS2 can get. Play that. That is what I play on. It's absolutely perfect. You get the Maria chapters. You get everything. Play that version of the game. But um, I think that's going to do it for this segment. I think that was a pretty good... A, what do y'all think? I think that was a pretty good summary. It's just kind of basing my personal experience with this game. And like I said, if you're watching this, I want y'all's experiences. Comment them in the, in, in the, in the, in the video, man. I want to hear people's experience of this, of this game. Like, it's changed my life. Has this game changed your life? Because that's what this series is going to be all about. This series is going to be mostly about games that have changed me personally. But moving forward, I want to play games that have changed other people's lives. And just see the outlook. And may that, whatever that be, say someone comments like, Oh, hey, yeah, um, Spec Ops The Line changed my, my outlook on a lot of stuff. And hey, you know what? We'll, play, we'll do a playthrough of Spec Ops The Line on stream. And we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. I mean, like I said, games as a medium are special. And I think that's been lost recently with a lot of games. The, the live services and everything, sure, it's fun. But I think as a medium of telling amazing stories, a lot of it has been lost because it's been shattered into DLCs and stuff. But this is all stuff we can talk about later. I'm glad to see games like Baldur's Gate come out. Resident Evil is my game close to my heart. Oh, for sure. For sure. You've already played them. True. But, there is one that there sh will be a future Games of Impact on. Because, uh, it made, me, it made me realize a lot of stuff about a certain types of games. So, you can look forward to that one. And you can probably... You can probably pick out which one it is. But that's going to do it for this segment. Um, next week, I'll have another one. 
it might be another big one or I might just pull out an obscure one. Y'all might not even know. Who knows, but hit your comments down below, please. I want to know what y'all think about this game and other games that have changed your life. I can go ahead and start making a list. But guys, thank y'all for coming. Like, comment, subscribe if you like the video.